for tapes of end-time meetings, deliverance services, or Lake Hamilton Bible Campgrounds publication, Voices from His Excellent Glory, Declaring the Kingdom, writes Post Office Box 21516, Hot Springs National Park, Arkansas, zip 71903. Our website is www.lakehamiltonbiblecamp.com and lhbconline.com. There are many free audio files there. It's like going to Bible school at home. Saturday evening, December the 26th, 1987. Midwinter Family Camp Meeting being held at Lake Hamilton Bible Campgrounds, Hot Springs National Park, Arkansas. Tommy Cook of Tulsa, Oklahoma is the speaker of the evening. Brother Todd Cook from over in Tulsa, Oklahoma. It's a privilege to have him be faithful to come and help us with the camp meeting. Amen. Hey, Amen. Praise the Lord. Bless you, Brother Man. Well, let's stand again. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Our Father, in the name of Jesus, again, we thank you, Lord, for the privilege of coming together. You said we're not to forsake the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is. Father, thank you for those that have assembled tonight around the name of Jesus and in your name, Lord. Father, bless this teaching. Open our hearts to receive it. And give us wisdom, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. And amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. How <clears throat> many know that God wants to take us a little higher? Uh, I want to start with a couple of scriptures probably tonight before we get in the message. Uh, turn to Deuteronomy chapter 5. Deuteronomy chapter 5, and I uh, appreciate being here with others to minister, Brother Frank and Sister Blanche and Brother and Sister Moody and Brother Bill and Linda and Brother Jack Harris and different ones. We appreciate all of you. In chapter 7, uh, what did I tell you? Chapter 5, Deuteronomy 5. Chapter 5, look at verse um, 4 and 5. I just want to give you two scriptures before we go into the message tonight, probably that we'll, we'll bring if the Lord lets me. The Lord talked with you face to face in the mount out of the midst of the fire. How many believe God wants to talk to us face to face? That's a union, a communion, an intimacy with Jesus. Next verse. Look at verse 5. I stood, Moses said, between the Lord and you at that time. Moses is a type of an intercessor here, or he is an intercessor here, standing between God and the people to show you the Word of the Lord. And I believe real intercessors hear from God. I believe they have a Word from God. I believe they hear God because they, they live in His presence. And then it says, For you were afraid by reason of, of something of the fire. Now, how many know that many of us are afraid of the fire? I mean, oh, the fire is real. The closer you get to God, the more you'll know of the fire in your life. Amen? Don't shout me down now because I'm preaching good. Amen. It's true. Now, notice, by reason of the fire and went not up to the mount. Now, the reason many don't want to go higher is because the fire does come into your life. There is, as our brother was preaching this morning, there is a baptism in water. There is a baptism in the Holy Ghost. And there is a baptism in fire, isn't there? Amen? Praise the Lord. So, the fire is real. Now, turn to chapter 23. Let me give you another scripture here before we, we uh, go, go into the message. Chapter 23, the, this, just the Lord put on my heart. Look in verse 14. And if we're going to go higher, if we're going to go anywhere in God, we've got to have a clean camp. How many believe that? Chapter 23, verse 14, For the Lord thy God walketh in the midst of thy camp. The Lord God walks in the midst of thy camp. There's quite a message just in that. Now, why does He walk in the midst of our camp? Number one, to deliver thee. To deliver thee. And number two, to give up thine enemies which before thee, which means uh, to defeat your enemies before you. So God wants to deliver you and I, and God wants to defeat our enemies. Can you say amen? amen? Hallelujah. Now, therefore, because of this, because of deliverance, and because of the enemies being defeated, therefore shall thy camp be something holy. And let me tell you, it cannot be holy without deliverance. 
Your camp cannot be holy without deliverance, whatever form uh, deliverance comes in. Hallelujah. Now notice, that he, God, see no unclean thing in thee, and turn away from thee. Now, if God turns away from us, that means we lose the blessing and we lose the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Yes. Now, probably you and I know individuals or, or in the, in, an individual or individuals that have had the blessing of God and had God's anointing. But today they're back in uncleanness. We'll lose the anointing if we allow that to happen. How many know that God's presence can lift off of a congregation, off of a church yes. as well? Yes. Because there are things in, we'd say, in the church that's not dealt with by God through the, through the shepherds, through the leaders. Right. God wants to do that, but the leaders ignore it. You cannot any longer sweep it under the rug. It must be dealt with if it's a problem Amen. in your individual life or even in the corporate uh, church. Praise the Lord. Now, turn with me to Proverbs. We're going from the mountain to wine. <laughs> Can you imagine that? Well, how many know there's different kinds of wine? It's kind of in the bottle, there's the joy of the Lord, and there's the wine of Babylon that you don't want to get in you either. Proverbs 20. Here's, we want to start here with a message tonight. But I'm not preaching just on wine, but I'm going to start with wine. How many have ever heard these words? Latter times, latter days, last days, or last time? Scripture, all Scripture. In Proverbs 20, verse 1, we're going to speak on the last days. Wine is a mocker. Mockery. And how many know that with mockery comes two other things, cursing and blasphemy? Wine is a mocker. Strong drink is raging, which brings rage. And whosoever is deceived, which is deception, thereof is not wise, which means no wisdom. Now turn to Genesis 19. Genesis 19.35. Here we see that God had told Lot to go up to the mountain. Now, we said a while ago, the reason people don't want to go up to the mountain is because they're afraid of the fire. And yet, how many know that Lot did not want to go to the mountain? In Genesis 19, in fact, come back here in Genesis 19 just a second. Look in verse, before we go to the verse I had. Look in verse... 17, Lot was told to escape to the mountain, lest thou be consumed or destroyed. Can I tell you that's what God's saying to you and me tonight, in the days ahead? It's important that we go up higher than where we are, lest we be consumed. Now, it says, and Lot said to them, to the angels, Oh, not so, my Lord. Sound like us, doesn't it? <laughs> now, you know who else said that? Oh, uh, not so, my Lord. Peter did. No unclean things, Peter said, had come into my mouth. And Peter said the same thing. Peter was on a housetop praying. Well, how many know a housetop is not high as a mountain? Now, most of us are on low ground tonight, and some of us maybe are high as a house, spiritually. But God's saying, go on up to the mountains. Amen? Hallelujah. In John 6, I believe it's John 6, when Jesus began to work miracles and the crowd began to follow him, the Bible said he went up into a mountain to pray. And then when they came to take him and make him a king on a lower level, he went up into a mountain to pray. How many know that's wisdom? The reason many have fallen in the past is because man has made, you know, whomever God's using, a god. Hallelujah. And because of pride, they have fallen. Man will make you a king on a lower level if you let him. But you have to go up higher. And yet Lot said, Oh, not so, my Lord. Now listen to what he said in verse 19, the last part of verse 19. I cannot escape to the mountain. But what did the angel say? Go to the mountain. I mean, oh, God will not tell us something we cannot do. He said, let some evil take me, and I die. He's full of fear. How many ever had to fight fear besides me? <laughs> Hallelujah. 
And if you read on down, you'll see the account that he got, he's, a, he's a fearful to, to go to Zoar, and, and yet he dwells in a cave. And, of course, incest is committed here. And yet, if you read the story, you see the same fear coming into the daughters. Because they're fearful they'll not have a husband. How many know that fear can be imparted right on down the line or whatever other spirit? Maybe. Look at verse 36 now. Here's where we're coming to. Thus were both the daughters of Lot with child by their father, and the firstborn bare son called his name Moab, the same as the father of the Moabites unto this day. The younger, she also bare a son, called his name uh, ben Ammi, the same as the father of, children, of the children of Ammon unto this day. So there's Moab and Ammon through <coughs> incest uh, with the father, these two daughters here. Now, turn with me to another scripture <coughs> in this Deuteronomy 23. But how many know when we talk about Moab, especially, Moab means to be like father. And there is a mixture, of course, with incest. And here in chapter 23, it's a familiar scripture, probably many of you know it, but I'm going to just go right on down the way the message God's given me into the last days. Deuteronomy 23, verse 2, A bastard shall not enter into the congregation of the Lord. The congregation of the Lord. How many know we're the congregation here tonight of the Lord? There are people that cannot come in this service like this right here. Number one, because of their doctrine. Number two, the pastor says they can't come. Or number three, they're just fearful to come. But more than that, how many know demons keep them out too? Amen. And so it says, A bastard shall not enter the congregation of the Lord, even uh, to his tenth generation shall he not enter into the congregation of the Lord. Who is it? The Ammonites and the Moabites. And ten generations, if there's a 40-year time period in a generation, 40 times 10 is 400 years. And as I've said, that's a long time to miss church, isn't it? Amen. Hallelujah. Now, in Hebrews 12, 8, let's bring it to where we are now. Hebrews 12, 8. And how many know that in America, one of the greatest sins in America today is not only abo- is abortion, but also incest. But incest leads to abortion. Amen? And it brings a curse. Somebody say amen. amen. And yet right here in Hebrews 12, 8, But if you, church, be without chastisement, correction, instruction, whereof all are partakers, then you are bastards or illegitimate and not sons. So just as incest was committed uh, in the natural, and man was called the bastard, Yet Paul, I mean, yet Paul here in Hebrews says that if we be without chastisement, then we're not God's sons, then we are those illegitimate children. Can you say amen? Amen. amen. Now, look at Numbers 24. Numbers 24. And look at verse 14. We're talking about Moab and, and Ammon, but especially Moab. But in chapter 24, verse 14, notice what it says here. Hallelujah. Well, verse um, verse 17. I shall see him, but not now. I shall behold him, but not nigh. There shall come a star out of Jacob. I mean, oh, his name is Jesus. And a scepter shall rise out of Israel and shall smite the corners of Moab and destroy all the children of sheep, which means the sons of seduction. I mean, oh, there's a seducing spirit in the land that wants to seduce your, you and me of our purity. But he said this star, which is Jesus, hallelujah, is going to destroy... All the children of sheep. Verse 18. And Edom shall be a possession. Seir also shall be a possession for his enemies. And Israel shall do valiantly. Verse 19. Out of Jacob shall come he that shall have dominion and shall destroy him the remains of the city. And when he looked on Amalek, he took up his parable and said, Amalek was the first of the nations, but his latter end 
shall be that he perish forever. How many know that's the flesh when we're talking about Amalek? Amalek was the grandson of Esau. And when you study on Edom, Esau, Mount Seir, and Amalek, and even Saul, you're dealing with the flesh, aren't you? And how many know the flesh will hit you right in the rear? Let me show you that. Deuteronomy 25. Deuteronomy 25. Let's look at it. Hallelujah. Deuteronomy 25, look in verse 17. Listen to what the Bible says. Remember, God said to Israel, What Amalek did unto thee, by the way, when you were come forth out of the world, out of Egypt, out of the lust of the eye, lust of flesh, and pride of life. Verse 18. How he met thee, by the way, and smote the hindmost of thee, even all that were feeble, Behind thee when thou was faint. Notice when he's going to hit you. When you're feeble, when you're faint, and when you're weary. And he feared not God. I mean, oh, that flesh of ours, when it wants to puff itself up, it doesn't fear God. Come on now. The carnal mind is what? Enmity against God, which means it's hostile. It actually opposes God. It hates God. And God said in verse 19, Therefore it shall be when the Lord thy God hath given thee rest from all thine enemies round about in the land, which the Lord thy God giveth thee for an inheritance to possess it, that thou shalt blot out. I believe God meant what he said. The remembrance of Amalek from under heaven, thou shalt not forget it. Now, go to uh, another scripture. Go to Exodus uh, chapter 17. I mean, oh, when God starts moving in your life, the battle starts too. In chapter 17, I won't read it, but God's going to stand here upon the rock in Horeb, verse 17, uh, chapter 17, verse 6. And water's going to flow out to God's people. Hallelujah. And then in verse 8 of chapter 17, then came Amalek. Then came Amalek. So after the flow comes the warfare. Amen? And I won't go on and read the rest of that. So Amalek, the flesh, begins to rise up when God begins to move. Amen? But how many know the flesh is in league with Satan? It's, a, it's, it's one with Satan. Now, let's go a little further now. Turn with me now to Jeremiah 48. We're going back to Moab here just a minute. Jeremiah... 48. And notice what the Bible says. In verse 11 and 12. Some of us are familiar with verse 11. And it's speaking of Moab all through this chapter 48. Almost a whole chapter on Moab. So God's trying to tell us something about Moab, isn't He? All right, verse 11. Moab hath been at ease from his youth. That's his lifestyle. I mean, oh, that's the lifestyle of many Christians, too. And he has settled on his lees, on the dregs, the dross, the filth. He just settled right down in it. Hath not been emptied from vessel to vessel. Because when you begin to be emptied uh, from one to another, let me tell you what happens. You become sweeter, pure, and cl clearer than what you were. You begin to leave some dross, uh, dross dregs, and filth behind. And you become more pure. Uh, as you're emptying yourself out. Notice, neither hath he gone into captivity. He's not going to be a prisoner for the Lord. Therefore, his taste, his taste remains in him. His scent, his discernment is not changed. Now, the next verse. But I want to read the next verse in the New American. In verse 12, it says, Therefore, behold, the days are coming, declares the Lord, when I shall send to him, to Moab, those who tip, T-I-P, who tip vessels. So what's going to happen? Hallelujah. His vessel's going to be tipped. Hallelujah. He don't want to pour himself out to others God's way. And so God says, okay, I'm going to send the tippers. Hallelujah. He's going to tip you. And that's not an offering under your plate either. <laughs> who shall tip vessels, and they will tip him over. 
and they will empty his vessels and shatter his jars. So there's a, there is a tipping, there's an emptying, and there is a shattering of Moab. Are you hearing me? And if you read Isaiah 30, 8 through 16, in the New American, you'll see there's some more shattering of jars. But I'm not going to read that. Hallelujah. What does that mean? That means if we don't voluntarily empty ourselves out, God will see to it, tippers will come to tip you over. How many know you'll lose what you have? Now, look in Jeremiah 48, 42 here. Listen to what God says about Moab. <clears throat> Hallelujah. Remember, we're talking about bastards, incest, incest in the natural, and those who don't want to be God's sons in the spirit, who do not want chastening. Amen? Now, in Jeremiah 48, 42, listen to what it says. And Moab shall be what, brethren? Destroyed from being a people... Because he hath magnified, what's the pride here? He hath magnified himself against the Lord. God is going to bring that pride down, isn't he, brethren? That haughtiness of man, that arrogancy of man, God is going to bring him down. Now, look in verse, chapter, rather, verse, chapter 48, verse 47. <coughs> now, look at it. Verse 47, we're speaking on the latter days, and right here we're going to see the first scripture. Yet will I bring again the captivity of Moab in when? The latter days, saith the Lord. God said it will happen, it will be. Thus far is the judgment of Moab. Now, notice it says here that God said, I will bring again the captivity. That word captivity means the fortunes, or it means a former state of prosperity. Did you hear that? You look in the Greek or the Hebrew yourself. It means a former state of prosperity, and it means the fortunes of Moab. Now, God is going to restore, allow Moab once again to rise up. Amen? The fortunes, the prosperity of Moab, which is a prosperity message, but it's also incest naturally and spiritually. And God said, and in fact, God's allowing to be raised up that He may judge it, brethren. Now, I think I wrote that scripture down in the New American. No, let me read it in the New American. Verse uh, 47. Let me read it here real quick. In chapter 48, I want to read it in the New American Standard. <coughs> Hallelujah. Okay. Listen to what it says. It says, Yet I will restore the fortunes of Moab in the latter days, declares the Lord, thus for the judgment on Moab. Now, how many believe there is a false prosperity in the land as well as there is a truth? And God will allow this thing to rise up in the latter days that He may deal with it and destroy it. Amen? Hallelujah. Now, <clears throat> look in chapter 49, <clears throat> verse 6. <clears throat> chapter 49 and verse 6. And then He says, And afterward I will bring again the captivity of the children of Ammon, saith the Lord. So, and that word captivity is the same word. It means fortunes are a former state of prosperity. So we're seeing both of them being raised up, aren't we? Now look in chapter 49, 35. Chapter 49, 35 through 39. We're going to see this word captivity again here, third time in two chapters. Look in verse 35. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, <coughs> Behold, I will break the bow of Elam, the chief of their might. And upon Elam, God said, I'll bring the four winds for the, from the uh, four winds quarters of heaven. Verse 37, I will cause Elam to be dismayed before their enemies and before them that seek their life. I will bring evil upon them. Verse, and then he talks about the sword coming. Verse 38, 
God said, I'll send the sword after them till I've consumed them. Verse 38, I will set my throne in Elam, will destroy from thence the king and the princes, saith the Lord. Verse 39, but it shall come to pass when? In the latter days that I will bring again the captivity, the fortunes, the former state of prosperity of Elam, saith the Lord. So we're dealing with Moab, we're dealing with Ammon, and we're dealing with Elam. Now, let me see, show you where Elam comes from, then I'll tell you who it is. Turn to Genesis 10, 22. Genesis 10, 22. And it says in this verse, the children of Shem, Elam. And then it mentions some others there. So it comes from Shem. Then we go to Acts chapter 2 on the outpouring uh, of the Holy Ghost at Pentecost. Acts 2, verse 9. And it, Paul, I mean, uh, the Bible is mentioning the people that were there at Pentecost. Parthians, Medes, Elamites. There it is. And different ones at Pentecost. Now, the word Elam, it means the Persians, or today it's Iran. So God is allowing... God is allowing um, the captivity or the fortunes or to that former state of prosperity, Elam or the Persians or Iran to begin to come forth in the latter days. Are you hearing me? How many know that's true by looking at your television? Amen? Now, what are we dealing with in Iran? We're dealing with violence, aren't we? We're dealing with terrorism. We're dealing with war. How many know they've got a lot of our war equipment in Iran? <laughs> and we're dealing with suicide missions uh, in those type of people. And yet God said that they would be restored or revived in the latter days. Now, turn with me now to Revelation 13. Let's see it here in Revelation 13. Now, I know that different beasts around the world from different nations mean different things. But if I'm studying the Bible and Daniel, then if I see something about a certain beast, then I want to see that same beast in another part of the Scripture. How many know we've got to stick with the Bible? I mean, we all know today that Russia is the, bee, uh, is the bear. Isn't that right? And yet, how many know the bear can mean different things in the Scripture, though? Just like the lion can mean, mean different things. All right, chapter 13, verse 1 of uh, Revelation. Notice what it says. I stood up on the sand of the sea, John said, and saw a beast rise up out of humanity, out of the sea. How many know he's in the sea tonight? How many know the dragon's in the sea too? How many know Leviathan's in the sea too? <laughs> Having seven heads Ten horns, and upon his horns, ten crowns, upon his heads the name of blasphemy. Verse 2. And the beast which I saw was like unto a leopard. Okay, if you study Daniel, you'll see the leopard kingdom was the Grecian kingdom. I challenge you to ch study chapter 2, chapter 7, chapter 8 of Daniel. And then his feet was the feet of a bear. The bear... The feet there represents Persia or Iran in the book of Daniel. And then also the mouth of the lion that represented Babylon, but today it's Iraq. How many know we're seeing Iran and Iraq fighting, and yet we're seeing Iran trying to destroy everything in its path? And yet God said, I will allow her to come forth in the latter days. Turn to Ezekiel 38. <clears throat> Hallelujah. But how many know the devil don't win? Amen. Now, turn with me to Ezekiel 38, verse 1. And Ezekiel the prophet is getting a word from the Lord here, and he said, The word of the Lord came to me, saying, Son of man, set thy face against Gog. I want you to notice that, against Gog. Look over in chapter 39, verse 1, just a minute. Chapter 39, verse 1. Therefore, thou son of man, prophesy against Gog, and say, Thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I'm against thee, O Gog. Here it is, O the chief prince of Meshach and Tubal. I mean, you know, when God goes after somebody, he goes after the top. 
He's going after the prince. Amen? The controlling factor. Now, he says back in chapter 38, Set your face against Gog, the land of Magog, the chief prince of Meshach. How many know we're dealing with Russia here? We believe in this chapter. In verse 3, And say, Thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I'm against thee, O Gog, the chief prince of Meshach and Tubal. Now, verse 4, God said, I will turn thee back and put hooks in thy jaws. Russia's got some jaws. You know what it is? It's communism and her military might. And God said, I'm going to put hooks in your jaws. I mean, when God hooks you, you can't get away. <laughs> and yet we're seeing destruction here, aren't we? Come on. Now, verse 4. God said, I'll put hooks in your jaws. I'll bring thee forth all thine army, horsemen, horses and horsemen, all of them clothed with all sorts of armor, even a great company with bucklers and shields, all of them handling swords. Verse 5. Who's the first one mentioned? Iran. Persia. That's the one God's saying I'm going to allow to come forth in the latter days, right? What for? That she might be destroyed. Persia, Ethiopia... Maybe Gaddafi will be on the front lines. And, oh, excuse me, that's the next one, Libya. <laughs> Ethiopia and Libya with them, all of them with shield and helmet. Gomer, which is probably East Germany, and all his bands, the house of Togomar, which is probably Turkey, of the north quarters and his bands and many people with thee. Now look at verse 7, what God's telling Russia. Be thou prepared and prepare for thyself, thou, and all thy company that assemble unto thee, and be thou a guard to them, and she is tonight. Now look at verse 8. After many days, thou shalt be visited in the latter years. Thou shalt come into the land that is brought back from the sword, is gathered out of many people against the mountains of Israel, which have been always waste, but is brought forth out of the nations, and they shall dwell safely, all of them. Let me ask you a question. Is natural Israel safe tonight? Huh? No. How many know America is a promised land, too? I said America is a promised land. You cannot say Israel and the natural is safe tonight. They'd like to kill all the, uh, those people there, wouldn't they? Now, verse 9, Thou shalt ascend. But how many know if you know your Bible, Russia, if, if she would come just down against the natural nation of Israel, she would just descend. Am I correct? Thou shalt ascend. How many know that not far from Russia is what? Alaska. And then you come right on down to Canada. He said, Thou shalt ascend and come like a storm. Now, I'm not telling you natural Israel over there or that little nation is not going to be hit, because I believe the enemy would like to wipe her out too. But how many know Russia would like to wipe this country out too? Thou shalt ascend and come like a storm. Thou shalt be like a cloud to cover the land. Thou and all thy bands and many people with thee, thus saith the Lord God. It shall come to pass that at that same time shall things come into thy mind, and thou shalt think an evil thought. And thou shalt say, I will go up to the land of unwalled villages. How many know America doesn't have any walls? Can you say that about the Middle East? No. I will go to them that are at rest, that dwell safely, all of them dwelling without walls, having neither bars nor gates, that is the United States of America. To take a spoil, to take a prey, to turn thine hand upon the desolate places that are now inhabited, upon the people that are gathered out of the nations which have gotten cattle, that's America. And goods that dwell in the midst of the land, Sheba and Dedan, I won't go into all that. Listen to what she says in verse 13. Here's what the young lines are saying. Are thou come to take a spoil? Hast thou gathered thy company to take a prey, to tear away silver and gold, to take away cattle and goods, to, to take a great spoil? Verse 14. Three more scriptures. 
Therefore, son of man, prophesy and say to Gog, Thus saith the Lord God, In that day when my people of Israel dwell safe, thou shalt, shalt thou not know it. Verse 15. Thou shalt come forth from thy place out of the north parts, thou and many people with thee, all of them riding upon horses, a great company and a mighty army. And thou shalt do what? Come what? Up against my people of Israel as a cloud to cover the land. It shall be when? In the latter days, and I will bring thee against my land that the heathen may know me when I have sanctified them in the old Gog before their eyes. My conviction is that both natural, the natural land of Israel and America will be hit at the same time. How many know we better pray for God's people? We need a burden to pray for the people of God in this hour. You cannot shake hands with those Russians and believe anything they say. We need to pray for our president and our leaders that God will give them great wisdom in this hour. Can you say amen? The Bible tells us to do that. And I believe our nation is facing judgments, brethren, of all sorts and all kinds. And the reason is God, I believe God is after a people in this land that He loves and the people that love Him. But we must pray and we must intercede. But I personally believe that Russia is out to destroy both. And we must pray for God's people. Praise the Lord. Now, let's turn to another scripture. Turn with me to Job 19 concerning the latter days. Job 19. Hallelujah. <clears throat> Job 19. And look at verse 25. Job 19:25. I'm not going to tell you America is facing her, her greatest hour. I'm telling you America must repent. God's people must repent. Amen? But we need to pray again, as I said. Verse 25 now, 1925. For I know that my Redeemer liveth, and that He shall stand at the latter day upon the earth. How many believe He's coming back to the earth? That's Job said his Redeemer. He said, I know my Redeemer lives, that he shall stand at the latter day upon the earth. And though after my skin worms destroy this body, yet in my flesh shall I see God. And the pure in heart will see God. Hallelujah. Whom I shall see for myself, and mine eyes shall behold not another, though my reins be consumed within me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So Job, Job said in the latter day, Hallelujah, his Redeemer, who lives, would stand in the earth. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Anybody desire to see Jesus? Hallelujah. I desire to see Jesus. Praise the Lord. And we must cry out that we see Jesus. It's only Jesus that's going to take us through the days ahead. Amen? Hallelujah. I believe that. Only Jesus can take us through. Amen. Now, turn to another scripture. Turn to Deuteronomy 4. Deuteronomy chapter 4. Look at verse 29. Chapter 4, verse 29. <clears throat> well, let's go back to verse 28. And there you shall serve gods and work, the work of men's hands, wood, stone, which neither see nor hear nor eat nor smell. But if from thence thou shalt seek the Lord thy God, if thou shalt seek the Lord thy God, thou shalt what? Find him. And you know the Lord said, Whoso findeth me findeth life. Amen. He is the life. Yes. Hallelujah. If you and me in this hour. But whoso findeth uh, uh, him, as I said, finds life. He said, Thou shalt find him if thou seek him with all thy heart and with all thy soul. Verse, verse 30, when thou art in what? Tribulation. Tribulation. And all these things are come upon thee, even in the latter, latter days. What are we to do? We're to seek the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. With all of your heart, with all of your mind, and obey Him, He said, I, you'll, I'll be found of you. I'm going to read that again. When thou art in tribulation, and all these things are come upon thee, even in the latter days. If thou turn to the Lord thy God. That's what he's saying to the church. That's what he's saying to America. That's what he's saying to the world. 
Amen. Hallelujah. Thou shalt turn to the Lord thy God and shall be obedient to His voice. For the Lord thy God is a merciful God. How many know that's true? He will not forsake thee, neither destroy thee, nor forget the covenant of thy fathers which he swear unto them. Praise the Lord. So there's a people going to be in tribulation in the latter days. God says if we turn to him and be obedient to his voice, hallelujah, then God will be a merciful God. Amen? Amen. Praise the Lord. Now turn to First Timothy 4. First Timothy chapter 4 in the Scripture concerning the latter days. <clears throat> Verse 1. I don't know how you believe, but I believe I see two things coming in the end of the age. An apostasy and yet a great outpouring of the Holy Spirit. Jesus, the day of the Lord, does not come until the great falling away and the man of sin is revealed. Though I believe the Bible is clear on that. But here in chapter 4, 1 Timothy, verse 1, it says, Now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith. That's the faith of Jesus. From the faith. You can't depart from something unless you've been in it. Isn't that right? Giving heed, here's how it's going to happen, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of demons, speaking lies in hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with a hot, hot iron, forbidding to marry and commanding to abstain from foods which God hath created to be received with thanksgiving of them which believe and know the truth. So God is saying there's going to be those in the latter times that shall depart from the faith, from the faith of Jesus. Now turn to first, uh, Second Timothy just a minute. I want to throw a scripture in here with this. I'll just throw a couple in here with it. Praise the Lord. Second Timothy 4, verse 3 and 4. Second Timothy 4, verse 3 and 4. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lust shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears. They'll get their own teachers. And they shall turn away their ears from the truth, and shall be turned into fables. Second Thessalonians 2, verse 1. Second Thessalonians 2, and verse uh, 1 through about 4 or 5 here. The Apostle Paul says, Now we be <clears throat> beseech you, brethren, by the coming, the parousia, the presence of our Lord Jesus Christ, and by our gathering together unto Him that you soon be not shaken in mind, or be troubled, neither by a spirit, nor by a word or a letter. How I many know that spirit can be, is an evil spirit? That word is logos. It could even that, be that which is preached. Uh, that's not truth, necessarily. Uh, and by letter, that which is written. He said, As from us, as of the day of Christ is at hand, let no man deceive you by any means. That's by spirit, by word or letter. For that day, the day of the Lord shall not come, except there come what? A falling away first. That's the apostasy. That's not a rapture like some are teaching. I mean, there are people preaching the rapture on that Scripture there. That's no more a rapture than I'm standing on the moon tomorrow. Amen. <clears throat> that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first. And that man, that man of sin... What a message there is in that, if you'd go into that. Be revealed the son of perdition. I mean, old Judas was the son of perdition. Jesus said all is lost. I mean, all is, only one is lost, rather, and that's the son of perdition in John 17. But Judas was among the twelve, wasn't he? Can I tell you the son of perdition is among the church tonight? And yet he's coming out there. He's standing in the holy place. Let me know that they're trying to bring, they are not trying to bring, they're bringing karate in the holy place. Martial arts. I mean, know that spirit's not from God. Amen. And yet there is, there, listen, you, I'm going to say something. We're facing false miracles, false signs and wonders as we've never seen, brethren, the counterfeit in the holy place. We have to be alerted. We have to be aware and we have to be uh, discerning in this hour to know uh, what be of God and what be not of God. Can you say amen? amen? And yet it says right here in this verse 3 that there's coming a falling away first and that man of sin will be revealed, the son of perdition. 
who opposeth and exalts himself above all that's called God, or that is worshipped, so that he as God sits somewhere. Now, most of us say, well, that's in the Middle East. Well, how many know that temple is the word naos there in the Greek? This is the naos right here. As Frank said this morning, we are the tabernacle of God. How many know that man of sin is sitting in temples today, right in the church? Amen? Now, God does not dwell in temples made with hands. says that twice in the book of Acts. He does not dwell in temples made with hands. And it's, Jesus said the abomination, come on, of desolation is standing somewhere in the holy place. Holy place. I mean, that holy place is reserved for God. You know what the holy place is? It's the school of the Spirit, yes, but it's also the soul, isn't it? Let me tell you what's opposing God to not exalting Himself in you and me is that old self. That unrenewed nature. That nature that wants to be God, it wants to be the show-off. Come on. And yet we know the man of sin is coming out there, isn't it? Can you say amen? When you're dealing with Antichrist, you're dealing with a spirit. You're dealing with a kingdom. And you're dealing with a man that's coming. Hallelujah. And yet Paul said right here in the temple, in the Naos temple, he said, your body is a temple of the Holy Ghost, Naos. Amen? Hallelujah. That's where he's sitting tonight. Most of us are blind to that because we're looking only out yonder. But how many know God wants us to begin to look in here too? Hallelujah. Yes, yes, see the Lord. But we've got to deal with this guy. Hallelujah. I said we've got to deal with this guy. Praise the Lord. We've got to put him off and put Christ on. Amen? Thank you, Jesus. Turn to Ephesians just a minute. Ephesians 4. Listen to what Paul said. Paul says in chapter 4, verse 22. Excuse me. Ephesians 4, 22. That you put off... It's like taking his coat off. Only it's not that easy. Necessarily. Necessarily. Unless we yield to the Holy Spirit. That you put off concerning the former conversation. How many know that's a former manner of life? The old man, which is what? Corrupt according to the deceitful lust. So in that scripture, it's the former life, it's the old man, it's that which is corrupt, and it's that lustful part of us. And be what? Renewed in the spirit of your mind, because that's where the battleground is, and that you put on the... New man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. Now look at verse 25. Here's the verse I'm coming to. Wherefore, he's talking to the church, uh, putting away. Now he said put off in verse 22. Now he says put a, putting away, lying. But the Greek says the lie. Who's he talking to? The church. Put away the lie. Anything but the old man and with Satan is the lie. Can you say amen? And speak every man truth with his neighbor, for we're members one of another. Look at verse 29 now. Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth. Now, he said the old man was corrupt. And he turns right around after saying, you've got to put on the new man. And he said, don't let corruptness come out of your mouth. How many know that's the old man talking? Now, turn to John 8. John 8, 44. Thank you, Lord. Jesus said to the Pharisees here, to the religious crowd, I believe it'd say the same thing today. He said, you are of your father, the devil, and the lust of your father you will do. He was a murderer from the beginning and abode not where? In the truth. He didn't remain in the truth because there is no truth in him. Can you say amen? When he speaketh a lie, but it means when he speaks the lie, he speaks of his own. 
Or another translation says he speaks his native language when he's talking to the lie. For he is a liar and the father of it. Amen? Turn back to Second Thessalonians a minute, chapter 2. Hallelujah. Look in verse... <coughs> Look in verse uh, 11. In verse 10, the Bible tells us those who are not received the love of the truth, that they might be saved. But how many know salvation is past, present, and future? I said it's past, present, and future. Verse 11, And for this cause God shall send them, those who would not receive the love of the truth, now, none of us have all the truth, but we can have a love for the truth. And because they rejected the love of the truth, that they might be saved, God shall send them strong delusion that they should believe the lie. The lie. Amen? Now, turn to Romans 1. Romans 1. <clears throat> Hallelujah. If you'll notice all these scriptures I gave you so far, these three scriptures, you find the word truth with the word lie. You have a decision. You receive the love of truth or you receive the lie. Now, in Romans 1, in Romans 1, verse 24, and you know in verse 21, there's a people that says that knew God but did not glorify Him and became vain somewhere in their what? How many know that's the beast at the feast and the liar for the fire there? Verse 24, Wherefore God also gave them up to uncleanness through the lust of their own hearts to dishonor their own bodies between themselves who changed the truth of God into the lie, it should be, the lie, and worship and serve the creature more than the Creator who is blessed forever. Amen. And for this cause God gave them up to vile affections and so forth. So, we're dealing with the lie, aren't we? Turn to Revelation chapter 12. Oh, Lord, help us to receive the truth, the love of the truth. Hallelujah. How many know when you get truth, something sparks down inside? Something goes off on the inside. That's, that's real. That's what you need. Chapter 12 of Revelation, verse 4, His tail, the dragon's tail, drew the third part of the stars of heaven, did cast them to the earth. And the dragon stood before the woman that was ready to be delivered to devour her child as soon as it, as it was born. As soon as it was born. Now, I believe right here, uh, this man-child is coming into that, that fullness of the birth. But he's still in the flesh and blood body because Satan's after, after him and seeking to kill him. How I many of you got a glorified body? I don't think you have to worry too much about Satan. And, of course, God's going to catch him to the throne, okay? And I want to show you a scripture on that now, and then I'll take you where I was going to go. Turn to 1 John 5. Look in 1 John 5. Let me show you here now uh, how God will protect that man-child. And yet, how many know, but how many know we have something to do about it as well? Hmm? How many know God expects some things out of us? To put the armor on, to stand in the uh, Spirit, be led of the Spirit, and listen to God. Amen? Okay, 1 John chapter 5, look at, verse, uh, look at verse 18. We're talking about the man-child being born, that spirit, soul, and coming on into that uh, fullness that God's going to pour in, into him. In chapter 5, verse 18, we know that whosoever is born of God, come on, sinneth not. Now, I know other translation says they're not habitual sinners. And so forth. And I agree with that. But I believe as we grow in God, we ought to stop sinning more and more. Come on. But he that is begotten of God keepeth himself. He guards himself. We're not talking about babies right here now. We're talking about people that's grown up in God. He guards himself and that wicked one touches him not. Now, the only way that that wicked one cannot touch you and touch me is to become like Jesus and get all that junk out of us that looks like him, looks like the enemy. Because he's going to come knocking on your door and if he sees anything in you and me that looks like him, he's going to say, that's mine. That's why we need deliverance. 
Hallelujah. But I want you to notice what it says. And that wicked one touches him not. Hallelujah. Now, back in Revelation 12, it says that when the devil comes to destroy this man-child, these sons, these overcomers, God catches him to the throne. And when God takes him to the throne, hear me now, when God takes him to the throne, three things happen. Number one, the woman goes into the wilderness. Amen? And I want to tell you this. There is a people in the wilderness now on their way out. And there's a people getting ready to go in. And I pray, God, I'll be one of those that's coming out. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. And number two, there was war in heaven. And you say, Amen. And then the Bible says, now salvation is come. Amen. And I believe when we're dealing with salvation, we're dealing with the fullness, aren't we? Amen. Now, go to Isaiah 9. Let's look at this lie just a little further here. Isaiah 9 and verse... <clears throat> let's see here. Isaiah 9, verse um, 14. Therefore, the Lord will cut off from Israel. How many know we're the spiritual Israel today? Head and tail. It said, the tail of the, of the dragon cast the stars to the ground. Branch and rush in one day. The ancient, the honorable, he's the head, the prophet that teacheth lies. He is the what? Tail. So the ministry that's teaching lies is the tail ministry. And notice verse 16. The leaders of this people cause them to err, and they that are led of them are destroyed. I mean, if we follow the lie, we'll be destroyed. Hallelujah. But Jesus is the truth. And we must follow the truth. Amen? Hallelujah. Let me give you one other scripture here before we close. Isaiah 2. Isaiah 2. Look at verse 1. Hallelujah. <clears throat> the word of the Lord comes to Isaiah. Verse 2. It shall come to pass in the last days that the mountain... Of the Lord's house, I want you to notice, the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established somewhere. Or prepared, is what it means, in the top of the mountains. God's taking us higher, isn't He? In the top of the mountains, and shall be exalted above the hills, and the nations shall flow, shall flow, shall flow into it. God's going to save as many in this hour as He can. He's going to save nations that will turn to Him in this end time, I believe. Because the Spirit's going to be poured out in abundance. Hallelujah. But God's taking us to the top of the mountain. Hallelujah. We're not going to be on the bottom. We're going to be on the top. Praise the Lord. We're going on with God. Can you say amen? Hallelujah. One other scripture. Isaiah 56. I said that a while ago, didn't I? Blame Bill for it. <laughs> Isaiah 56, look in, verse, look in verse 3, the Lord speaking here to the eunuchs, and we know the eunuch is the one that's not afraid of Jezebel, right? You know, there are eunuchs that have been born that way, there are eunuchs that were made eunuchs by men, and there, were those, there are those who become eunuchs for the kingdom of God, Jesus said. That means those who will not reproduce out of themselves. They will not do anything out of themselves. They've come to a place that they're led of the Holy Ghost and they listen to God. How I many know there's pressure at times put on people to do things? But you have to ignore that. We have to listen to the Holy Ghost. We have to become spiritual eunuchs. Listen to what he says. The Lord hath utterly separated me from his people. Neither let the eunuch say, Behold, I am a dry tree. Well, a dry tree is death, isn't it? It's winter. It's weathering. There's no moisture. There's no rain. God says here to the eunuch, don't say you're a dry tree. How many ever felt like you were one? <laughs> Hallelujah. Verse 4. 
For thus saith the Lord to the eunuchs that keep my Sabbaths. Number two, that choose the things that please me. And three, they take hold of my covenant. So I want you to notice they're keeping the rest of God. They're choosing those things that please God. And I'll tell you things that please God is when you and I walk by faith and we walk in the Holy Ghost. And then in verse 7, listen to what God says. Even them, the eunuch, will I bring to my holy mountain and make them joyful in the house of prayer. Their burnt offerings and their sacrifices shall be accepted upon mine altar, for mine house shall be called a house of prayer for all the people. Glory to God. Hallelujah. It says, Saviors are coming upon Mount Zion. Those deliverers. Amen? And in Revelation 14, it says the, the 144,000 are on Mount Zion. And God says back in Obadiah, He said, Those saviors, those deliverers will come up on Mount Zion in order to judge the house of Esau, the flesh. But how many know those people is going to be judged first? They're going to judge themselves. You can't judge anything until you're judged. Isn't that right? Yeah. Hallelujah. I want to tell you something, brother. Don't be, don't be fearful of the fire. Amen? If you're going to go to that mountain with God, you've got to... You've got to have, God's going to touch you with this fire. Don't be afraid of it. Because He's going to burn away those things you and I don't, don't need. Can you say amen? amen? Praise the Lord. Let's stand. Can we do it? I want to minister to some, some of you tonight as the Lord leads. Let's just praise our God tonight. Hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. Lord, take us higher. See the heart cry of your people, Lord. We bless you tonight. Praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. We love you, Lord. We worship you tonight, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 We love you, Lord, tonight. Blessed be the name of the Lord Jesus. Blessed be the Lord. Hallelujah. Blessed be the Lord God. Praise the Lord. Linda. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Reach your hands out to Sister Linda tonight. Yes, Lord. There's coming a new direction, saith the Lord. There's coming a new turning in thy life. And it shall be of me, saith the Lord. And thou shalt know it at that time. For I, the Lord, do lead thee. I do direct thee, my daughter. And know that my encouragement has come this night. And my inner strength has come to lift you up and to strengthen you within and even without. But know that I'm going to turn you in a way that's going to be different Yea, to thy flesh, and thou shalt know it, and thou shalt rejoice in it at that time. But know that the hand of the Lord has given you eyesight. I've given you eyesight to see those things in my body that are not pure, as well as those things that are pure. And yea, in this hour I'm going to require many things of thee. I'm going to show you those things, and I'm going to show you things in the night time as you pray. And thou shalt go to this one, thou shalt go to that one, and thou shalt go over here, and thou shalt warn... Yet thou shalt edify, for I, the Lord, have spoken it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Come on. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Brother Frank. Praise the Lord. Brother Frank. Hallelujah. Let's stand the Spirit, folks. Oh, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Praise you, Jesus. My son, the Lord has set thee apart. Yea, know that his hand is upon thee. Know that his goodness passes by you this night. Yea, as my goodness came to Moses, it's coming to you this night, saith the Lord. And know that my strength shall cause the weakness to vanish. And know that my power shall cause the weakness to vanish. And know that the hand of the Lord does do a strange and a mighty work within thy heart, because I've seen the faithfulness and I've seen the struggles, but I, the Lord, do take them away. I, the Lord, do pour in strength, my son. Yea, I've given you hearing, I've given you understanding. And truly in this hour thou shalt stand in that office that I place thee in, and thou shalt minister truth by my Spirit. For surely the hand of the Lord comes upon you, and thou shalt be visited by the Lord. Thou shalt be visited in this hour by His Spirit, and new truth shall be imparted as you wait upon Him. For as you wait, new strength comes, and thou shalt know that it's me. Hallelujah. 
say many, many, many. Love you, brother. After two days, he will revive us. On the third day, he'll raise us up. After two days, the chains are broken. On the third day, we'll raise with him. This is the end of this message. Our website is www.lakehamiltonbiblecamp.com and lhbconline.com. There are many free audio files there. It's like going to Bible school at home.